Yes. Um, hello and welcome to the Students on Wellbeing Symposium. I'm replacing Astrid Schütz. She's actually my supervisor at University of, um, uh, University of Bamberg, but unfortunately she cannot make it. So I'm now here to greet you and welcome you to the symposium. And we have five talks. So I think each talk is 15 minutes, uh, inclusive discussion, including discussion, yeah. So, and we start with wearing face masks. So, um, Silvia Spacciari, um, it's yours. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Silvia Spaggiari. I'm a PhD student from the Padua University. And today I'm going to talk to you about a work that regards the dispositional, psychological, and emotional factors connected to the behavior of wearing face masks when they were no longer mandatory in a large Italian sample. To start with, as everybody knows, the world has been struggling against the COVID-19 pandemic in the last few years. And the World Health Organization recommended, among others, to use face masks in order to limit the spread of the virus. Since then, many studies focused on the positive and negative attitudes that are linked to the choice of wearing face masks. But they mainly studied that in periods where masks were mandatory in most countries. So we asked ourselves what happens when face masks are no longer required by the governments. Thus, we decided to perform the network analysis as several variables have been investigated in relation to the behavior of wearing face masks. First of all, the network analysis allows us gaining insight into the interplay between a lot of factors that are involved in the behavior of wearing face masks and allows us to identify which are the central nodes, so the main factors connected to the behavior and the links about the variables considered. Moreover, the network analysis allows to evaluate multiple variables at the same time. And last but not the least, it may help laying the foundation for developing new hypotheses to deeply understand which is the complexity of interaction between these numerous factors. So several variables have been actually investigated concerning the behavior of wearing face masks. First of all, the emotional experience of people while they were wearing uh, face masks. A study by Palmer and colleagues asked to their participants how was their emotional experience when they were wearing face masks. More specifically, they asked if people were feeling controlled, weak, scared, silly, and brave, caring, strong, and protective during this experience. As you can see, they found that uh, a positive emotional experience is more strongly connected with a greater use of face masks, while a negative one is linked to the opposite behavior. However, the one exception is for the sensation of feeling scared, as when people are more afraid of the virus, they tend to protect themselves more, so to use more face masks. It has to be said that there are very few studies that specifically focus on the emotional experience of people while they were wearing face masks. So, for example, considering the emotion of feeling weak, brave, and strong, they have been investigated just in male population, and the authors found that uh, some males, due to the social pressure, tend to feel more weak and less brave and strong while they wear face masks, so to use them less. Considering the demographic factors, literature showed that age and educational level may be significant predictors of face masks use. So older adults and those who have higher educational level seems to be more prone to use face masks. Considering the dispositional factors, literature also evidenced that the fear of COVID-19 and the trust in healthcare professions are linked to greater use of face masks while reactance is linked to the opposite behavior. Considering the resilience and the attitudes toward physical touch, they haven't been studied yet in relation to the behavior of wearing masks, but resilience seems to play a significant role in um, the positive attitude towards uh, protective behavior. So it would be interesting to see if these variables are connected specifically to the behavior of mask wearing. Lastly, Concerning the psychological factors, literature reports that anxiety and depression are linked to a negative attitude towards the use of masks 
And also personality traits plays a role in the behavior. More specifically, it seems that type internalizing personality traits, such as detachment, negative affectivity, and psychoticism, are associated with less confidence with health protective measures. So, coming to our study, we had two main aims. The first one was to explore the associations between the mentioned variables, so a wide range of emotional, demographic, dispositional, and psychological factors that can be linked to the behavior of wearing a face mask. We used a network analysis, and the study was performed in Italy when masks were no longer required by the government. As a second hypothesis, basing on the literature, we selected some variables considered in the network analysis to be potential predictors of face mask wearing. More specifically, the emotional experience while people were wearing masks, negative affectivity, fear of COVID-19, and anxiety. 1,151 adults participated in the study. They were between 18 and 64 years old. They were for the 66% females, and they were mostly Italian. The protocol consisted of an online interview implemented through the public platforms, and the data collection period was between June and September 2022. Considering the measures, we collected data about the demographic characteristics of the participants, so for example, age and nationality, we assessed also their dispositional attitudes, such as resilience, reactance, and trust in healthcare professions. We assessed which was their emotional experience while they were wearing a mask, considering the same emotions mentioned before in the study by Palmer and their COVID-19 experience. We did that by, per by preparing an ad hoc social demographic interview. Moreover, we used the self-report questionnaires, more specifically, the multidimensional assessment of COVID-19 related fears to assess the uh, fears connected to COVID, the personality inventory for DSM-5 personality disorders to assess the personality traits of the participants, mm -hmm. and the generalized anxiety disorders K7 and PH49 to assess respectively the anxiety and the depressive symptoms. So here you can see a graphical representation of the network analysis. In green, you see the positive correlations between variables, and in red, the negative ones. The thicker the lines, the strongest the correlations. So what is clear is that some variables are not significantly connected with the behavior of using the mask, more specifically, age and education, the attitude toward physical touch, resilience, past COVID infection, reactance, and trust in healthcare professionals. What you can see is that there's a strong positive association between the personality traits in light blue and the anxiety and the depressions in green. More specifically, negative affectivity showed to be significantly and positively connected with the, the fears of COVID-19, the anxiety and the depression, and also with a greater use of face masks. Moreover, an increased use of masks was in closed environment that was uh, connected with uh, a greater use also in open environment, was significantly and positive associated with a positive emotional experience. So you can see feeling caring, protective, strong and brave, which in turn was negatively connected with a more negative emotional experience. So feeling silly, weak, scared and controlled. Considering the graphics, you can see that psychoticism showed to be the most central node in the network. It means that considering its strength and expected influence, it was one of the nodes that was uh, more important in determining the other connections. Moreover, considering closeness and betweenness, we found that other candidate nodes for explaining the connection of the whole network were the use of face masks in closed environments, feeling weak and caring while using face masks, the COVID-19 related fears and negative affectivity. Thus, we decided to use these mentioned variables as potential predictors of um, the behavior of wearing face masks as this study is a data-driven research. So as you can see, we performed a logistic regression model to see which of these factors were significant predictors of wearing face masks in closed environments. 
we found that uh, the COVID-19 related fears and the emotional experience of people while they were wearing masks are significant predictors. More specifically, the greater the fears of COVID, the greater the use of the mask. And considering the emotional experience, uh, feeling caring increased the probability of wearing a mask in close environment while feeling weak reduced it. So uh, we found that psychoticism has a key role in influencing the other connection. More specifically, eye psychoticism was positively associated with eye negative affectivity, and these two factors may play a significant role in the psychological distress, the fears of COVID-19, and also with a greater use of face masks. Moreover, detachment, psychoticism, and negative affectivity show to be strongly connected with the psychological stress, both anxiety, depression, and fear connected to the COVID. Thus, they may be uh, risk factors for the psychological well being in a pandemic context. Lastly, the high propensity to wear a mask was associated with either, with either anxiety and COVID 19 related fear. So it seems that a greater use of face mask is connected with the negative emotional experience. Focusing on the right part of the network, as you can see, the emotion of feeling caring is link, was linked to a greater willingness to wear face masks, and it was connected with the other factors of the positive emotional experience, thus feeling protecting, strong, and brave. Moreover, feeling caring showed to be negatively associated with the negative emotional experience of so feeling silly, weak, scared, and control. So feeling silly was associated with a reduced willingness to wear face masks. Moreover, considering uh, the behavior of wearing a mask, we found that greater fears related to the COVID uh, were significant and positive predictors. Thus, when people felt more afraid of the virus, they tend to protect themselves more so to adopt greater safety behaviors. Moreover, the emotional experience was strongly connected and predicted of the behavior of wearing masks. So it seems that it's not the stable aspect of personality, such as psychoticism or negative affectivity, but rather the situational variables of the emotional experience and the COVID-19 related fears that may predict the use of the masks. This, this study has to be seen in light of some limitations. First of all, it is not possible to assess all the possible variables uh, involved in the behavior of wearing face masks in the same study. So future research may uh, include also other factors such as the political orientation or the gender of the participant. Moreover, the network analysis allows to identify correlations or association between variables, but not causal relationships. So we, have, we must be very careful in interpreting our results. And lastly, we perform the network analysis on the entire sample that we have. While we should give the other choices, for example, subdividing the groups in other subgroups and performing the analysis separately on them. For example, considering those who were wearing a mask and those who were not. To sum up, this, this study is one of the first that tries to obtain a framework considering the multiple factors that can play a role in the behavior of wearing a mask. And is one of the few that study this topic in a period where masks were no longer mandatory. We wanted to suggest the importance of supporting the health protective behaviors, for example, focusing on the situational emotional experience rather than exclusively on personality traits, and also um, the, the nodes of the network can be targets for future intervention. So to conclude, conducting studies on face mask use and the, the adoption of other protective behaviors can be very important to guide the, the public health strategies to develop uh, effective intervention and promotion of the health for future pandemic. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you for your talk. Do you have any questions? Okay, if not, then we proceed with the second talk. That's um, from Stalami Universitat, Pattern Language to, to Assess and Promote the Well-being of University Students by Barbara Agreli. Yes, um, I'm, I'm online, I'm in Madinapoli, and I'm the, I'm the presenter of uh, this uh, 
presentation. I want to share my screen. Can you hear me? Yes. And can you see my yes. screen? Perfect. Good morning. I'm uh, briefly introduced me. Um, I'm a community psychology and I work at the University of Naples, Federico II. I'm going to present a participatory tool for the assessment of need, emotion, and representation, and also a tool for create a solution, a new solution of students' population about their well-being in higher education context. The participatory tool named the pattern language, come sta la mia università in Italian language, in English, how is my university, assesses the well-being in a participatory and collective way. As, as we know, um, students' well-being is uh, uh, a priority for uh, um, higher education system at European level as well as at national level. As we can see, the ISAT report denounces that 5% of young population who committed suicide, uh, suicide, um, suicide uh, is represented by higher education students. And and 33% uh, of students have anxiety and depression. So uh, this dramatic condition uh, is increasing after the COVID pandemic and uh, literature uh, invites the scholar to move their attention from Mali's center perspective to a culture promoting well-being. Well, uh, um, literature underlined at the same time that is uh, um, widely important to involve the main stakeholder in planning and design activities to implement students' well being in higher education. So, uh, starting from this point, uh, we, in, we in, built a tool to involve uh, our principal stakeholder, that is, students. Before to uh, describe, um, uh, before describing our tool, I want to uh, introduce the briefly uh, what uh, um, what uh, pattern language is. Pattern language allow access the implicit and tacit knowledge of social system and the context in order to activate reflective processes and action that able to cope with the uncertainties and challenges of the context with flexibility and creativity. I want to underline the uh, last word, last word, flexibility and creativity, but because our tool uh, assumes um, creativity and flexibility as an important part of the process um, of, assess, um, of assessing well-being. The step um, of our setup process um, starting uh, from uh, starts from the results of a meta study of 56 papers selected among 60,000 scientific papers. Uh, and uh, uh, we conducted on these 56 <laughs> papers a meta-analysis that allow us to identify four main principal uh, issues that each well-being promotion activity must consider, have to consider. The, issue, uh, the issues are context, organizational, relationship, and diversity and equality. The tool. The tool uh, comprises a deck of 16 cards describing critical events or experience that students can meet during their academic life. 
We have another card uh, that uh, um, we name the uh, we name question mark that I'm describe later. Just a moment. Um, the card, the card um, have uh, the main themes uh, of the card are, uh, for example, academic career experience that includes a performance of a success, professional skills, didactic, another uh, theme or issue of the cards are didactic uh, tools and virtual didactics, relationship, gender and equality, and service for students. About the question mark card. Um, this card consent um, allowed uh, the students to describe uh, a critical events uh, uh, and uh, um, some uh, um, uh, that, that they perceived as important as uh, the main uh, critical experience that students uh, um, perceive. Um, as we can see by the um, by the slide, the structure of uh, uh, of the, um, each card may um, contains three parts. The first part is the description of the critical uh, events. The second part describes um, some information about the events, and the last part of uh, the card um, is related to some uh, questions or better stimuli for or better stimuli for starting the group discussion. Um, we want to present uh, the first application of the first applications of our tool um, so uh, our pilot study. Um, that we carry out with 140 students of the University of Naples, Federico II, uh, and we um, planned two uh, sessions. One session uh, with the students attending the bachelor uh, degree in psychology, science, and uh, technique. The other session with the students attending digital culture and communication. We choose students of the second year because there are more confidence with the university uh, than students attending to the first year. So we can uh, have the possibility to access to their implicit and tacit knowledge uh, about the context they live, in which they live. Um, about the procedure, uh, in each session, the big group uh, was divided into, into small groups of a maximum of six uh, students, and each uh, group read all the cards, and then the member chose one card from the deck to discuss and, uh, and the card with the question mark. Uh, um, each group wrote a report in which they described their uh, group discussion, so their need, they, uh, they, uh, the, the protective factor that they perceived, also the risk factor that they perceived in the university context. The activity lasts uh, 40 minutes, then all uh, group, all small group discuss the, their work in the big, in the big one. Uh, as we can see in this slide, um, we selected the two, uh, the two main uh, cards uh, used by the students in their uh, group discussion. One is uh, the performance of the success. And about this card, uh, students uh, show an, ab an ambivalent feeling. On one side, they report worry and anxiety. And on the other side, they recognize the performance of success as a trigger for their curiosity and hope in the future. 
But they, uh, the, the second uh, um, card uh, selected the main frequent, uh, the most frequent uh, card um, selected by the deck uh, was um, good relationship with the scholar. Good, uh, have a good relationship with the scholar emerged as an important issue to promote well-being, while uh, if this relationship is negative, it, is, uh, uh, it has a strong and a negative impact on the well-being. About the question mark, um, in the slide, uh, you can see the card that uh, um, students uh, wrote, uh, and uh, this card is in Italian language, but the, um, the, the, the name of this card is University for Students, a, a creating a tailor-made university. Uh, that is, uh, students uh, um, once uh, um, uh, expressed the need uh, of uh, um, creative, social, and recre um, uh, recreational space for students, uh, such as uh, bar, canteen, uh, uh, every um, every place where they can meet, uh, get uh, to know with the other students. Um, if I want to uh, underline that uh, um, the image that uh, they uh, add to this card is uh, um, a part of our university, University of Federico II, uh, in which uh, that represent the, um, the only space where they can meet, they can uh, stay together. So the need of uh, school, of students of the university, of the university, um, the students of University Federico II is to have um, uh, uh, more, a, a lot of space to, uh, where to stay together. Here we can see uh, some picture um uh, or better some drawing uh, drawings that uh, students made du during the, um, the group discussion that represent competition that represent worries that uh, represent the, the need to um, uh, to um, to feel more confident with the context about the discussion. Um, going to the preliminary evaluation about the applica uh, applicability of the pattern language um, as uh, described by the user, we can say that the tool is very simple and a flexible tool. Uh, is a, a tool very easy uh, for uh, the user to empathize in critical events. And uh, um, uh, the user, in our case, students, uh, um, uh, uh, um, stated that uh, this tool allows them to over overcome some difficulties in talking about their well-being. So we can see that this tool is a contextual assess, uh, assessment tool for the specific need, desire, and solution and expectation of students. Finally, um, I want also um, I want also to add that university um, represent a, a, a good university for uh, the students that we involve. That is a university where you can feel a sense of belonging, a sense of community. And uh, um, another aspect that emerged by the group discussion is that, uh, um, I, um, sorry, I, uh, I forget uh, um, uh, before to describe these results. Uh, so we can see uh, only in discussion um, in this slide. 
um, the another aspect, another issue important for the students is the sustainability, the uh, economic dimension. So they state that uh, uh, it is important for there uh, to um, have uh, um, a good uh, economic well-being, a good perceive a good level of um, economic well-being that in ecological um, uh, um, in ecological uh, meaning perspective of well-being is an important aspect as Prilenteschi suggests. So we can see that well, community well-being um, in our sample um, is uh, correlated to sense of community and a good economic state. Uh, in um, finally, uh, this uh, study has uh, limits um, because uh, uh, we have to uh, verify uh, if the critical experience and events are situable in different geographic contexts. We have uh, um, to create a pattern language for scholar and administrative staff to evaluate uh, university well-being in their tacit and implicit knowledge of literature, um, underlines that uh, few studies uh, focalize uh, uh, the attention to this uh, kind of stakeholder of university scholar and, uh, um, and administrative uh, staff. And uh, um, another aspect is to, um, to use the, uh, the tool in the uh, national territorial. Thank you for the attention. Thank you for your talk. Do we have any questions? So then we continue. So the third talk is about assessing psychological well-being by Claudia Mateski um, from University of Perugia. Buongiorno a tutti, mi sentite? Ah, devo parlare in inglese. I have to speak in English, sorry. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. And uh, I am Claudia Mazzeschi, I am a professor at the University of Perugia. And uh, this uh, contribution is with me. With, uh, with me there are also some colleagues, Livia Buratta, Laura Muzzi and Elisa Del Vecchio. Um, this contribution regards uh, a topic that uh, the a colleague before discussed because it is about well-being, but it is connected to a, um, a counseling intervention, um, and I will show what uh, exactly I am um, referring to. Um, it's quite clear that the university period is uh, recognized as a life uh, transition where young individuals are engaged in the process of building their identity along personal, social, educational, and of course, professional dimension. But during this de de developmentally crucial period uh, is a, a peak for the onset of uh, a mental disorder. And uh, there is a period in which mental disorder can be uh, observed. Um, recent uh, research, recent data, and uh, also data um, after the, the pandemic, as we know, uh, has underlined and uh, underlined that the, um, the, the levels of uh, psychological distress uh, is higher during the uh, period of university and also sometimes um, it's uh, uh, either the, um, the, the, the psychological well-being in terms of poorness, it's a uh, it's, uh, poorest. Um, more specifically, a growing body of research, uh, as I was saying before, uh, highlights an increase uh, on focus on the mental health on university students uh, based on the um, 
uh, following findings. Uh, um, studies have found high levels of psychological distress, distress and poor psychological well being in this population, anxiety and symptoms, interpersonal difficulties, and uh, suicidal ideation, but especially uh, depressive symptoms. And there is a growing importance of the quality of peer relationship and peer belonging, as we said before, which appear to uh, influence aspects such as uh, alcohol and substance, substance abuse uh, or use, uh, concern related to body images uh, or problematic internet use. Uh, as I was saying before, during the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the presence of fear, concern related to the academic path, a sense of isolation, a lack of emotional support from peers have been uh, associated with uh, the emergence uh, of uh, uh, psychological and psychopath uh, psychopathological issues among the university uh, students. Data are very recent and are also a bit uh, uh, stressing for, 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 for us uh, as community. Um, so uh, as a result of this indication, this data, there is a, an urgent need for reinforcement of timely mental health care intervention, which may uh, which met many university counseling services are, are carrying out in, in different uh, regions, in different cities uh, of the university. And uh, we know that it is crucial for uh, university and counseling services to employ uh, um, uh, a, a comprehensive uh, and also an accurate assessment, assessment process during the process of uh, counseling uh, which we think should uh, be aimed to uh, at evaluating, uh, of course, student mental health uh, and also psychological well-being in order to provide uh, uh, and to think about uh, tailored psychological intervention to target specific needs we assess in this uh, population. Uh, we have got uh, the University of Perugia uh, counseling services that is called Focus P, uh, and uh, the, the, aim, the aim of the services is to help students in managing personal, relational, and emotional weakness or, or problems, uh, exam difficulties, anxiety, uh, doubts about the personal abilities that, of course, may arise, as I was saying before, during the, this uh, uh, this period, this uh, lifespan period. Um, <laughs> briefly, uh, we have got a, a model of consultation um, in which uh, um, uh, we, 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 the counseling is uh, the service is structured in, in order to guarantee a, a maximum of five, six meetings session free for all the students. Um, lasting approximately one hour, um, as you can see from the from the beta, and also a follow up interview six months after the end of the uh, consultation. This is a, a, a way to uh, to track and to keep the um, the, 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 the level of um, of the students of well being and also of course uh, uh, symptoms. Um, okay, um, well, regarding psychological well-being, uh, well-being is, is uh, um, we think, an important construct. Uh, it is not only, of course, uh, uh, happiness or, present, or the, the presence of pleasant emotional states, but according, uh, for example, with the to RIF model of psychological well-being, well-being, uh, it is also considered an optimal level of mental and emotional functioning, uh, where a person feels uh, uh, fulfilled, balanced, and capable of facing life challenges uh, in a positive manner. Uh, we, we, you see in, in this uh, slide the, the, the perspective of RIF that who developed um, a model, a multidimensional model for, for well-being, uh, 
uh, that, that aims uh, uh, to capture and measure uh, various dimensions of human well-being, uh, six dimensions, as you can see. Um, six dimensions, six core dimensions or facets, which collectively contribute to a, a person's overall uh, uh, psychological well-being, self-acceptance, positive relationship, autonomy, environmental mastery, purpose in life, and personal growth are the six uh, dimensions of, uh, uh, of this model. Um, what is missing? Uh, some aspect. Uh, we, we know that are the gap in the, uh, this moment, uh, in this uh, framework of uh, uh, research and clinical uh, um, Reflection. Most of the previous studies on mental health issues in university students have employed uh, only measure on psychopatholo psychopathological characteristics. That is right, of course, as we, we saw uh, before. Uh, recent systematic reviews reported that uh, the high prevalence of depression among, among university <laughs> students is around the, the 25%, which is quite high, uh, considerably high than that of the general population that is around uh, the 12%. So it's a, <laughs> more or less a double of the, <clears throat> the amount. When the psychological well-being has been measured, uh, very few studies use assessment tool based on a uh, well-known and accurate conceptual model of the psychological well-being construct. Uh, well-being is sometimes <clears throat> um, defined uh, in a positive way or in a negative way, the, the absence of symptoms uh, instead of the presence of happiness. And four, to date, no studies have explored the potential mediating role of the clinical relevant dimension of psychological well-being in a sample of university students. And so we tried to, uh, uh, um, to meet this, uh, this, this aspect. Uh, regarding this presentation, the, the first thing was uh, to explore the level of depressive feature, general psychological distress and psychological well-being among help seeker university students, not only the help seekers. And the second thing uh, was to evaluate the potential mediating role of the six dimension of the psychological well-being according to uh, RIF uh, model in the relationship with, between baseline depressive symptoms and general psychological distress. Uh, the, the, the study I present is a cross-sectional uh, study uh, as a cross-sectional design. Uh, we use the inclusion criteria to, uh, to, to, to construct, to build the, the, the sample, at least uh, 18 years, the completion of the full assessment procedure and the, the counseling service intake, uh, no organic syndrome, no psychiatric disorder, uh, etc. Uh, according to this criteria, we had uh, 235 participants uh, recruited at the, at the services uh, between January 21 and June 23. Uh, the, the average age is uh, the one you, you see, and of course also we have got some, uh, um, some characteristic regarding, uh, uh, of course, the composition in terms of sex, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, year of, uh, of study. The measure, uh, the social demographic, uh, the, the PI, the personality assessment uh, inventory, which is a, a well-established self-inventory of personality. Uh, we know that the PI demonstrated good psychometric properties. And, um, in, in this study, we, we use the, the, the depressive feature clinical scale. We focus on, on that. We use also the uh, symptom checklist uh, 19 revised uh, as a global score in this, uh, in this study. And uh, of course, uh, the psychological well-being scale, uh, which uh, <coughs> consists of 18 items that, that tap the six dimension I was referring, uh, referring before. Some, <clears throat> some data um, regarding uh, uh, the, 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 measure we, the, the, the measure we used regarding the, the PI depression score within uh, 60, 69 suggests the person may be unhappy and sensitive, pessimistic, self-doubting. You can see the, 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 mean, the mean value of the population. 
And regarding the uh, global score for SSEL is uh, a value of more than, uh, higher than 60, indicates a high level of overall psychological distress. We are uh, a little bit in, in, in line with the, with the main, main value. And regarding the psychological well-being uh, um, uh, um, dimension, the self-acceptance, autonomy, and environmental mastery are dimensions with the lowest score. Hmm? Uh, the the red. correlation showed also that all the um, dimension of the psychological well-being were strongly and negatively related to um, both pi overall the depression score and the S and the STL not 19 area global symptoms index as you can as you can see there are only a difference with respect of sex not real a very difference because it's a tendency as a, you 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 can see and uh, this is the the, the, um, the, the 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 mediation model we test uh, we we as I was always saying before we 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 tested all the all the scale all the scale thank you uh, all the scale and uh, for for the sake of clarity we we, we I speak only about the, the significant result okay that has the, the that regard the self acceptance scale. Hmm? Uh, the positive relation scale and the autonomy scale. Okay, in this uh, three models, the, 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 that are the ones uh, uh, which resulted uh, uh, to have uh, uh, an ind indirect effect between the um, power, uh, depression as assessed at the PI and the uh, global uh, um, symptom index at the SCL. Uh, as you can see from the uh, from from the slide, uh, they they remain. They, they, we found both uh, uh, direct and indirect effect of each uh, dimension for self acceptance, positive relation, and autonomy. Hmm? Uh, I go to the conclusion. Um, these results for us are in line with those uh, uh, evidence a uh, an increase in depressive symptoms, general psychological distress, and lower levels of psychological well being in university students with a psychological well being dimension of self acceptance, autonomy, and environmental mastery appearing as a, we have seen it today. Uh, to be the most uh, vulnerable dimension in, a, in our population, in that population. Uh, the direct effect of depressive symptoms on general psychological distress uh, is mediated by self-acceptance, positive relation, and autonomy. Mm -hmm. The three resulted have an indirect um, effect. This finding suggests the importance uh, of uh, including within the intake assessment process uh, in the university counseling service, not only problematic area of mental health, but also the, the positive part, the positive aspect, uh, the positive and adaptive psychological feature, uh, because we think that applying measures that comprehensively uh, uh, assess various aspects uh, of an individual psychological functioning allows us to obtain information about dimensions that may re require clinical attention or may be relevant intervention target. And this approach helps to understand what works for whom, <laughs> as we saw and as we know from the research in psychotherapy, and to tailor also uh, counseling intervention in a university setting, being uh, and what, watching also to. Uh, what can mediate the, uh, the the real function in a positive and negative aspect? Thank you. I guess so. Uh, you may have a few questions. If not, I have a um, brief comment for you. I found the uh, well being measure and theory interesting. Um, perhaps it's uh, helpful to connect with the self determination theory. Yeah. Teach in Bayern, they also have this need for autonomy, competence, belongingness. I think this fits nicely to all those three aspects of this well being measure. Thank you. It, it, it is nice. And uh, of course, the, the idea that the self is the, the center yeah. uh, is conceptually very uh, useful. 
and uh, the motivation, the idea of uh, the, the, the self uh, uh, and the determination theory with the motivation mm -hmm. aspect is something that is crucial, uh, I think, in this, uh, yeah. uh, in, this uh, in, in, in this period, and also to uh, <clears throat> to work specifically with the, with students. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, we, we don't use it now, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, we, we use the, the self determination theory with another project, but it is a uh, uh, powerful, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, then we continue with the first talk um, by. Paula Magnano, University Student Sense of Community Assessment in the Italian Context. Yes, I, online. I'm online. Good morning. I share my screen and I start my presentation. Let me know if it is okay. So, um, good morning. I present um, a study on university students' sense of community assessment in the Italian context. Um, this study is framed in the action research intervention aimed at promoting students' well-being in academic contexts. Uh, first of all, uh, the actual theoretical framework on well-being, as we have seen in the previous uh, presentation, uh, poses uh, its uh, focus both on individuals um, and on context and social dimensions. Second, the universities can be considered as small, small cities in which the students share time, tasks, and relations. Third, the uh, social and academic adjustment, the perception of being part of a system and the involvement in the campus activities are positively related with retention and persistence in the study. A sense of community uh, can be defined as the feeling of being part of a community. This includes formal and informal organization with a physical and geographical location, but also is referred to social entities based on common interests, goals, or needs. Moreover, the concept of sense of community describes the perception of similarity and interdependence among people that are stable members of a group. And there are a great number of studies that have underlined that uh, feeling of being a part of a community, uh, of university community, is positively related to persistent and uh, persistence and academic achievement. Then um, we have academic satisfaction that is one of the other constructs that we have considered in our uh, empirical study that uh, is defined as the feeling of enjoyment and pleasure related to the academic experience. We consider academic satisfaction as a multidimensional construct um, that uh, encompasses both um, study uh, related um, aspects and uh, relational aspects um, and uh, aspects related to the um, university organization. Uh, on the behavior um, plane, uh, academic satisfaction is positively related to academic performance and to attitude toward the study. On the relational plane, academic satisfaction is positively related to the positive relationships with fellows and professors. And uh, it has an important role in the career construction of the students as it encompasses the um, perceived utility of the degree course in, prepar in preparing for future jobs. The aim of the present study is, uh, um, the, uh, is to adapting the, mm, the scale of sense of community that is a, a, an existing scale created for online courses. And we, um, we are trying, we are adapting it to a traditional academic context. 
and then um, exploring the relationships between academic sense of community, academic satisfaction, and uh, um, positive and negative outcomes. The positive outcomes that we have considered um, are uh, two indicators of subjective well-being. The negative outcomes are academic stress and uh, the risk of dropout. The hypothesis is that academic satisfaction is a mediator in the relationship between sense of community and the indicators of positive and negative outcomes for students. Uh, the uh, study is still ongoing. At, uh, at this moment, uh, we have uh, 291 university students aged between 18 and 40. Uh, the 75% of them um, uh, are off-site students, and uh, the 50, uh, about the 57 of these off-site students, however, live in the place in which they study. Um, they, uh, the, the participant uh, attend uh, um, in the most part, a bachelor degree uh, and uh, um, attend Italian University. The most part of them are in the South. The measures that we have used um, to, to, to uh, detect that data uh, are the scale of a sense of community um, that uh, is composed of uh, three uh, dimensions, belongness, influence, and need satisfaction. The college satisfaction scales uh, that analyzes five dimensions, uh, study, choice, uh, satisfaction about study, choice, uh, future career, services, and relationships. The satisfaction with life scale and flourishing scale to detect uh, the subjective well-being, the university stress in its short form. And then uh, we used um, four um, items ad hoc created to explore the risk of dropout. Um, the, the items are uh, as follows. Uh, speaking of your university career, have you ever thought uh, about changing your course of study? Study during your entire career in university? Uh, have you ever actually changed the course of study during your university career? And the second one is, have you ever uh, even thought about interrupting your studies for longer or shorter periods during your entire university career? And have you ever actually interrupted your university career? So um, these are the distribution of uh, frequencies about the two items um, for the risks, uh, risk of dropout. So uh, the first item uh, regards the um, having, th having thought of change the course of study and the most part uh, of the respondents have never thought uh, uh, about uh, uh, this, um, uh, this uh, uh, hypothesis. Uh, the second item regards um, the thought of interrupting their studies and also in this case, uh, the most part of the participant um, have never thought of stopping their studies or uh, um, I have rarely, rarely uh, thought of stop uh, the, um, the studies or stopping the studies. And um, uh, here we have the, um, the, the analysis on the um, sense of community scale. Uh, so uh, the original scale was composed of 36 items uh, and after an iterative explore, exploratory factor analysis, we retained 23 items, the best items, but um, uh, uh, um, differently from the original scale, uh, our um, uh, exploratory factor analysis uh, gave, uh, uh, gave a, factoral, uh, a factorial structure um, uh, composed of uh, five dimensions uh, that we have named uh, as belong, uh, sharing, uh, satis need satisfaction, uh, influence, and utility. Uh, we, um, as the study is still ongoing, uh, we imagine that this factorial uh, structure uh, should be uh, revised um, in uh, uh, when we have uh, more participants, more respondents. 
and um, the uh, confirm confirmatory factorial analysis um, uh, uh, gave us the same fitting indexes, both for the five uh, dimension um, factorial structure and uh, the, um, the five dimension with one high order factor. So uh, we uh, at this uh, to present these results, we have uh, chosen uh, to present this factorial uh, structure, but uh, the which one uh, without the high order factor uh, has the same uh, fit indexes that are um, almost acceptable. Uh, we um, we uh, are confident that uh, we can obtain better um, fit indexes. Uh, then uh, the correlations between the variables suggest uh, us uh, that, um, the, um, uh, that these dimensions are strictly related and uh, uh, so we tested the uh, mediation and the, the relationships are also in the um, in the direction that we expected uh, so uh, we tested uh, a mediation model uh, in which uh, um, the sense of community uh, is um, related to life satisfaction flow and flourishing uh, through uh, the uh, complete mediation of academic satisfaction and um, while it is uh, uh, negatively related to academic stress, change and interrupt uh, through the, um, uh, the mediation of academic, of academic satisfaction. Um, the mediation is complete uh, for change, for the intention uh, to change and interrupt uh, is partial for academic stress, as we can see in the uh, table uh, with, the, um, with the single path. So uh, summarizing the results of our, of our studies, the sense of community scale is a prom promising measure to evaluate the sense of community in academic contexts. Uh, but we have to uh, continue uh, the uh, continue the study, and uh, we have uh, um, planned also a, um, a second time uh, of uh, detection of data detection with the same students uh, to verify its uh, stability and uh, so um, uh, reliability uh, the, the reliability. And, um, and to verify uh, the, uh, uh, the causal relationships uh, in, uh, verify, uh, hypothesized in the mediation model. Uh, the sense of community is a contextual resource that promotes general and domain-specific well-being of the students, and it positively positively contributes to academic satisfaction that encompasses also relational and contextual dimensions. Its effect on students' well-being is mediated by academic satisfaction, both um, for positive and negative outcomes. In fact, through academic satisfaction, the life satisfaction and the flourishing are enhanced, and through academic satisfaction, the university stress and the risk of dropout is reduced. So, um, which are the operative implications of uh, these results? First of all, uh, we hope that these results could provide useful suggestions for university counseling and tutoring services. In fact, besides the strengthening of individual resources, it is necessary to empower collective resources through group interventions. Then, um, obviously, uh, uh, as I have underlined during my presentation, this study has some limitations. First, uh, the first is um, that these are preliminary results and the data come only from uh, the first wave of, uh, uh, of administration, but we have already planned a second time. Uh, then uh, the use of um, uh, self-report scales 
and uh, uh, the need of uh, uh, further explore the factorial uh, structure of the scale and the other psychometric properties. Thank you very much for your attention.